This video is a continuation of the series we've been doing for lab one. Let's get to question five. Question five. One of the difficulties in reading the ITA is that it often uses common, everyday words in a non-intuitive, defined way. For example, briefly skim section 67.2 and note that it limits the amount deductible as an interest expense on money borrowed to purchase a passenger vehicle, in quotations. I think we can do that. We are been instructed to briefly skim section 67.2. So let's do that. So grab your Income Tax Act and go to section 67.2. This is section 67.2 and you'll see that I have highlighted some key terms already. Let's read it. For the purpose of this act, if an amount is paid or payable for a period by a person in respect of interest on borrowed money used to acquire a passenger vehicle or zero emission passenger vehicle or an amount paid or payable for the acquisition of such a vehicle then in computing the person's income for a taxation year the amount of interest so paid or payable is deemed to be the lesser of the actual amount paid or payable and the amount determined by the formula and then there's a formula there we don't need to go through that formula. In fact, the question asked us to skim the section. Think of some of the key terms that I highlighted, like lesser of with an ER. That means that the Tax Act is about to present you with at least two numbers or two calculations or some numbers and calculations. And the taxpayer is to choose the lesser of those numbers or the smallest of those numbers. And that is what the question means when it says that section 67.2 limits the amount deductible as an interest expense on money borrowed. It's referring to that lesser of. That would be the limitation. Section 67.2 also referred to a passenger vehicle. Let's go back to the provision. Looking at the provision, we can see the word highlighted, passenger and vehicle. So the entire term is there. This is a good time for us to look at a provision and look at what's beneath it. A lot of provisions, if you are looking at a printed version of the Act and some electronic versions of the Income Tax Act, will have something called related provisions. And beneath that, they might have definitions, regulations, interpretation bulletins, and sometimes they'll have notes. The notes to this provision does talk about a defined term in section 248 subsection 1 passenger vehicle and so there we have it now we know that passenger vehicle is actually a defined term in the tax act why don't we go and find that provision so grab your tax act and go to section 248 1 and look up passenger vehicle here we are passenger vehicle and according to the income tax act it means an automobile more specifically, an automobile acquired after June 17th, 1987. Now, if we go back to the question, question five, part one says, given your understanding of what a taxi generally is, do you think this limitation on interest deductibility applies to interest on money borrowed to acquire a taxi? In other words, you were being asked, since section 67.2, limits the amount of interest on a passenger vehicle, do you think that section 67.2 applies to what you and I would consider a taxi? Well, a lot of us, you and me included, would probably just hear the words passenger vehicle and we would say, yeah, that's exactly what a taxi is. You take passengers and you put them into a vehicle and you drive them around. But as we've seen already, passenger vehicle is actually a defined term in the Income Tax Act, and it means an automobile acquired after June 17th, 1987. Okay, that still sounds like a taxi to me, but let's keep reading. We see in the notes to passenger vehicle, it says C section 248 subsection one, automobile. Oh, the plot thickens. So take a moment to get to section 248 subsection one, automobile you'll see that I've highlighted some key words. 
But before we get there, let's just read paragraph A. It says automobile means paragraph A, a motor vehicle that is designed or adapted primarily to carry individuals on highways and streets, and that has a seating capacity for not more than the driver and eight passengers. Okay, that still sounds like a taxi to me, but keep reading. But does not include paragraph B, an ambulance. B.1, a clearly marked emergency response vehicle. B.2, a clearly marked emergency medical response vehicle. And paragraph C, a motor vehicle acquired primarily for use as a taxi. Oh, snap! You didn't see that coming, did you? Actually, you probably did. Otherwise, why would anyone make a video about this? Yeah. Anyhow, let's go back to the question. So I think given your understanding of what a taxi generally is, do you think this limitation on interest deductibility applies to interest on money borrowed to acquire a taxi? Look, part one, answers would have varied. And most of us probably would have said, yeah, given a general understanding of what a taxi is, it's a passenger vehicle. Part two, however, is what we just spent our time going through. According to the Income Tax Act, does this limitation on interest deductibility, that's referring to section 67.2, does that limitation apply to interest on money borrowed to acquire a taxi? And I think we can answer by saying no. Section 67.2 does not apply to a taxi. ITA 67.2 applies to a passenger vehicle, which according to ITA 248 subsection 1 passenger vehicle is an automobile and ITA 248 subsection 1 automobile paragraph C says a taxi is not an automobile. Therefore, a taxi is not a passenger vehicle and ITA 67.2 does not apply. That is a very difficult question. That's a difficult question even for some accountants to handle. So are we going to give you something like that on the exam? Well, now we can. Listen, we probably wouldn't give you something quite that difficult but we could easily give you something that has the same sort of logical path. And you might be saying there was nothing logical at all about getting from the big, that question to that answer. But now that you've seen that if we give you a defined term, sometimes you might have to look for related provisions and in the notes to find another defined term. For whatever reason, it's not uncommon for the Income Tax Act to define a term with yet another defined term. So that is very challenging to do. But the point of this question was to get you to appreciate that the legislation uses language very differently from us sometimes. So before I sign off, I just wanted to quickly thank you for all of your time, attention, and effort thus far in the course. I really appreciate it, and I know just how much work it is. I had to go through it all myself at one point many, many years ago. So thank you for watching, thank you for trying, and I'll see you next time.